Welcome to holiday time in Europe. I am now in my beautiful adopted hometown of Vicenza, Italy. It's actually post holidays and as you can see, the city is pretty quiet. So we decided to take a road trip across Europe. Come with me on a seven country journey from Italy to France, Switzerland, Germany, the Netherlands, Belgium and England. This was more or less the route we took. We had limited time, so we just drove through these countries in Western Europe, ending up in the UK. So why did we decide to go by car? Well, when you travel by car, you can see so many things that you don't see when you travel by plane, like these mountains. You can also stop throughout your journey and see small towns and less touristy places. Small towns give you a great idea of the true culture of a place. But when you fly, you usually experience only big cities and miss out on everything in between. There were so many cool tunnels in Europe just like this one, especially while driving through the mountains of Northwest Italy and Switzerland. Our first stop, Inski, Switzerland, a tiny place that we discovered by chance. Well, we just pulled off the highway once we got hungry and stopped there to have lunch. We had saffron risotto, salad, french fries and more. It was like something out of a storybook. The beauty of this kind of road trip is that we didn't actually plan our stops. And traveling like this with only a loose plan and not too many fixed stops in mind allows you the flexibility to make unique discoveries like this one and get pleasantly surprised. It leaves you open to what the universe wants to show you. On the road again, we marveled at the houses built into the mountains, and our next stop was Colmar, France. Beautiful place, with this Statue of Liberty replica to greet us on our way to our hotel, this tiny motel-style place. Of course, we had to choose our hotels carefully and make sure to book ones with parking. And now we're on our way into the city center. This is another small and not so famous town, but well worth the overnight stop. It was a hidden gem with this adorable city center. It's a Wednesday morning, January 4th, so just after the holidays. It's still pretty quiet, but we don't mind. For us, it's a perfect time to walk around and take in the sights, like this market. I just love seeing the daily life of local people in different places. You know, going about their business and shopping or selling their vegetables. This market had a number of shops and also cafes and restaurants. So of course we stopped for a cappuccino and an apple crumble. Then we took a look at this beautiful river and thankfully there were still many holiday decorations up around town. So we took what was probably the last chance to enjoy them. To be honest, I was a little apprehensive about taking a road trip during this time of the year. I thought it would be cold or snowing, but it was surprisingly warm for January and we didn't face any snow, although there was some rain here and there. I especially love these tiny, narrow and pedestrian only streets. Seems like we stepped back into medieval times. On the road again from France to Germany, we saw many wind turbines like these, which proves how important sustainable energy is up here in this part of Europe. We saw so many wind farms throughout France, Germany and the Netherlands. Then we had a drive through in Stromberg, Germany, another storybook place, but unfortunately we didn't stop because we just couldn't stop in every place. And to be honest, this town looked totally asleep. It was pretty though, although it was raining. And then on to our next stop, Nijmegen, the Netherlands. This here was our amazing hotel, or Tjeschecken, whatever that means, on the outskirts of the city next to a river and lake. We love nature, so we wanted to see the Dutch countryside, and this was the perfect traditional place to do that. Since it's winter, no one's sitting outside, the inside's packed and everyone is enjoying amazing homestyle food from this extremely polite staff who spoke perfect English and had amazing customer service skills. And this is the lake that was right across the street from the hotel. It was a little scary walking on this long, narrow bridge, but it was a great place to reflect on all of life's blessings. 
all the successes of 2022 and look forward to a good start of 2023. Now, we couldn't visit the Netherlands without going to Amsterdam, right? So that was our next stop and it was my first time here. So first, let's have a look at this amazing place we stayed called Social Hub. Social Hub is much more than a hotel. It's a co-working space, an innovation hub, a meeting place, and a place for digital nomads. There were several cafes and restaurants inside, a gym, a pool, and much more. Here it looks pretty quiet because it's only 7 in the morning when I made this video, but in the afternoon and evening it was buzzing with people, collaborating, holding meetings, working on their computers, and more. The whole concept seems so very Amsterdam, but actually the Social Club is an international chain with several locations around Europe and is a growing global community for ambitious content creators, entrepreneurs, and startups. Now let's go and have a look at our room, shall we? The design was unique, simple yet stylish, with areas to think, dream, work, and of course sleep. It was spacious and cleverly designed with a beautiful view of the city and this big comfy bed. The design had a homey feel and it was super welcoming. In fact, these rooms had been student housing in the past. The bathroom was cool too and it was the first place we ever saw this, a meter on the shower which tells you how much water you had used and encourages you to stop your shower. The values of sustainability were everywhere in the social hub. We are now in the main square of the center of Amsterdam, just outside the Centrum metro station, where you can get tickets to riverboat cruises and easily walk around to other famous attractions. Then it was time to drive through Belgium and reach Calais for the Eurotunnel to England. It was my first time in this cool experience where you drive your car onto a train and ride, sitting in your car, in a tunnel under the English Channel to reach the UK. And after a smooth and comfortable ride of just 30 minutes, we were in England. The cost to ride the train was around 120 pounds per car, which can change depending on the time frame when you go. It was worth it, and the whole process was well organized by very polite operators. Next and last stop on our journey, beautiful Brighton, England on the coast of South England. This is the marvelous place we stayed, Brighton Freedom Experience Glamping. Glamping means glamorous camping, and this was like our own little cabin, which had everything you could possibly need. Here's the living room, and this sofa here turns into a double bed. There's even an extra bunk bed and sofa, a full kitchen with cooking facilities, and a full bathroom with shower. One of the best aspects was the view of the sea from the patio. Now we're in Brighton Marina, such a beautiful and peaceful place to hang out, admire the sailboats, take a walk with your family, or have a bite to eat in any one of these boardwalk restaurants. We wanted to get a better look at the seawall, which was protecting the harbor from the strong waves. In fact, some of the waves were crazy strong and crashed up against this wall with all of Mother Nature's fury. Wait for it, I managed to catch one really big wave on camera right here. Whoa! This side of the marina was much more peaceful and the sun was even starting to come out. Even the seagulls were enjoying this peaceful water. So apparently you can walk up onto the seawall in this path, but of course it was closed due to the rough seas. It would have been pretty cool to walk on it, but clearly too dangerous at the moment. There's something awe-inspiring about rough seas like this, and I couldn't get enough of it. We wondered what would happen if you'd fall in. Would you be washed ashore or pulled out to sea? Oh, and check out those white cliffs in the background. Then we wandered into one residential area in the marina just to get a glimpse of what life looks like for people living here. Quite posh, I would say. The most colorful thing we saw that day was this globe, a work of art by Serena Sussex called Expanding the Soul Through Music. The point of the globe is to show the history of black music and its contribution to British society. 
Now we're down on the actual Brighton Beach to witness the waves up close. The ground is completely covered by these colorful pebbles, which makes it difficult to walk, but a great workout for the legs. Due to it being winter, there are very few people around, but I'm sure this beach is packed in summer. We did see some people walking on the boardwalk, a great place to have a stroll. And then finally up to the street level to get one more view of the beautiful and rough sea. Well, that's all for our European road trip. Thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one.